how many men have subtracted the opportunity of you being a wife from you and you didn't even know it? Some of y'all don't understand that you would have been a wife by now. If you didn't hold on to that man for as long as you did, that man didn't add anything to your life, but, but he took away the opportunity for you to find the man actually that God had for you, your marriage minded man, the man that wanted to spend the rest of his life with you. You sacrificed that for a man that was night to night with you, a man that could be sometimesy with you. A man that halfway hit you up. A man that was in between blessings. A man that didn't learn his lesson after he fumbled you once and he gave him a second chance. He fumbled you again, so you gave him a third chance. How many of you right now that are watching ain't married because you gave that loser years of your life and children? You gave him children and years of your life praying that eventually he turned into a man that you should have waited for. I'm going to start this off by saying that is exactly what Neil Long did. We're not going to talk about Neil Long, but I just want to put a person's life right in your face real quick. Neil Long got with a dude. She knew the dude was trash at some point because it came out that that's the reason why they actually didn't get married because I think he was cheating on her years ago. But she gave him a baby, and because she gave him a baby, she decided to say just like you. Neil Long now has two baby daddies and is about to be single all over again, just like a lot of you. See, just like what A said, women tend to waste their own time and then blame it on somebody else wasting their time. See, a man that you date, he's your decision. So whoever it is that you give your time to, he isn't a narcissist. He isn't a cheater. He is your decision. And that is the thing that is important for you to know and understand. You can sit around and call a man that you dated and, 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 and it didn't work out or whatever after you've seen all the red flags, all the names you want in the book. But at the end of the day, the number one name that he has is your decision. Is always a woman complaining about their man, complaining about their ex, but you don't complain about the time that you took him back, that you took him back again. And this is what women say when they take a man back. I dumped him, but he kept coming back. <laughs> so now <laughs> you dump the guy and you give him another chance and you blame him for coming back. This is the mind of a lot of women. You literally see what a man is doing, how he's treating you. You stay and after 30 years, you finally leave, but <laughs> guess what? You take them back. And then when you tell somebody the story of how y'all are still together, you always say, well, I dumped him and he kept trying to come back. But you let him, which means your decision became a second decision because you could have let him go, went on with your life. The problem with all of this is women don't necessarily want to be honest with themselves. They rather be victims of their own problems and blame their lives, their issues on men. But the actual issue is some of you aren't ready to be in a relationship. And two, the only reason why you're actually in a relationship because you want to <laughs> with no condom. That's really it. He never told you he wanted to marry you. He never really told you anything. He was just like, right, let's just see how things go. There's a possibility that he literally told you that he did not want to be in a relationship. But simply because you don't want to be a 304 out in these streets because, you know, how y'all say a girl has needs. You would rather get into a relationship hoping that it can turn into something. Even though he said, or you got the signs that it wouldn't turn into anything, simply so you can <laughs> without a condom. Now I'm gonna go a little deeper. <laughs> go a little deeper. <laughs> a lot of you ladies worry or complain about a man cheating and then you take him back. It's not necessarily that he betrayed you, it's the fact that. Y'all are clapping cheeks without a condom and you're like, yo, one, I don't want you to do that with somebody else because you might bring me back some, which is understandable. But the second thing is 
I want you to act right because I don't want to start over with no condom with somebody else. That's the main reason why a lot of you stay in these crappy relationships. Because you want to do this with no freaking condom. Because you know if you get back out here, you're going to have to start all over, go on dates. You're going to have to learn him. He's going to have to learn you. And then after all of this learning, you both may not be compatible in the bedroom like you are or were compatible with the guy you just left. So instead of you going through all of this and that, you rather stay with this dirt bag who's treating you like crap just so you can stay comfortable in your little bubble of lies, in your little bubble of delusion. See, in most cases, your ex did not break your heart. He broke your narrative. I'll say that again. It's a very good chance that your ex, by doing whatever it is that he did or didn't do, he did not break your heart. You're upset with him because he broke your narrative. So a lot of you ladies actually think you're in control of something, but you're not. The man is in control. And with all that being said, you have a narrative, a preconceived narrative that you want to play out. Right when you get with a guy And when it starts to play out You start feeling good You start feeling great Right And then at some point He starts to act up Because at the end of the day He wasn't the type of man That you really needed He was the type of man That you wanted And because of that You ignored all the red flags Because your narrative Is your narrative See a lot of women love to say Women can focus on all these different things at one time. You know, y'all are y'all multitask. No, you can't. Your narrative is a perfect example of that. When you have this tunnel vision narrative of we're going to be together. Ooh, we're going to do this. Or, ooh, we're going to whatever. Because a lot of times it ain't even got nothing to do with marriage. Because some of y'all don't believe you're ever going to get married. But you just want the thing that you are involved in to stay the thing that you're involved in. Whether it turns into marriage or not. But when the thing that you're involved in doesn't turn into whatever it is that you want, you get heartbroken. But if you sit back and just think about where was this going anyway? Because remember, it wasn't going towards marriage. It was just a thing that you wanted to keep moving forward, but it wasn't going anywhere. So it couldn't move forward. You get upset because this thing stopped. When you as a woman have a certain level of understanding that you have to first let a man know what you want, which is a requirement. Hey, I look to be married. I don't want to have some little situation going on for like three or four years or a near long situation, 12 years. And if things aren't working out and if you do this or if you, you do that, I'm out. Because I'm not going to go through all this and that. And I'm not going to waste my time. Because like I said earlier, all you ladies do is waste your time. Your second job is you waste your time. You go to work and then you get off work and you waste your time. Because, in all honesty, dating is your coping mechanism. It keeps your mind off of your childhood trauma. See, being in a relationship just makes you feel safe. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel normal. Feeds your ego, all these different things. And I'm not saying relationships are bad because they're not. But when you get in a relationship and the relationship isn't going anywhere and you are okay with it going nowhere, simply because either the man blatantly told you it ain't going nowhere or he keeps showing you signs that isn't going anywhere and you don't have a baby with the man that isn't going anywhere, you are now upset. We as people, we have to stop coping with our issues by sticking a person in front of us thinking they're like a tree blocking the sunlight from hitting us in the face. In this situation, the sunlight is actually the trauma. We try to 
hide from our childhood trauma with this man or with this woman. And then since we got a in a relationship, we feel like we're good, we're safe, we're this. But if the relationship isn't going anywhere, you actually aren't safe. Because like A said, your husband is out there, but you got a boyfriend. Your husband is out there looking for you, but he can't find you because you're in this crappy, going nowhere relationship and you refuse to let it go. So all of you ladies who just run around saying there's no good men out here. There's a reason why you think there's no good men out here. Because there's a man in the way of the good men. You and your fearful decisions are in the way of you finding a good man. It's like having a window that's broken. And you try to look out the window. And you see, you're looking through all these little cracks in the glass. You don't really see what's actually in front of you because of your trauma. Because of your narrative. Because of your fears. But until you get therapy, until you get some type of coaching... And you sit down and you become okay with what happened to you when you were young. And you are okay with letting that go. Because like I said, we as men did not traumatize you. We as men simply reminded you or triggered the trauma that was already there. When your mom did whatever or somebody else in your family did whatever. When you were like 9, 10, 11, 12. Way before you even met us. But all y'all want to do is whine about how these men are this and these men are that. But ultimately, your choices are this and your choices are that. Because there are plenty of men out here, just like there are plenty of women out here. And you have women over here, you have women over here, you have men over here, men over there. But if you just choose this one particular person and you stay with them because they're safe, because they're comfortable, because they're familiar, and then you run around calling the person a narcissist. But ultimately, if you're with a narcissist or whatever... A lazy man, how did you attract that person? You ultimately may be the narcissist, the lazy person. So before you start running around talking all this mess about us, saying you don't want to waste your time, I'm willing to bet that you enjoy wasting your time with these losers that you keep picking and keeping in your life. Then you want to turn around and say, there ain't no good men out here. Well, get your little loser boyfriend out the way and you'll be able to see him because we're out there. Let me know what y'all think in the comments.